Hello, it's Amy Williams for the You Perform YouTube channel and I'm here again with our expert, fitness expert, Aaron. So today we're talking about rest and recovery, a hard thing to do in our crazy, hectic lives. Yeah, something that people really struggle to give themselves time for, right? But we all need to pay attention to how well we recover, how much rest we get, so that we can perform in all aspects of our life, right? As an athlete, you would have had a lot of rest and recovery within your training program, and that's because you were performing at a really high level. Well, now as a mum, with kids and a job and everything else, you're performing at a high level just in a different way. So why should you treat your body any differently? And I think it's very difficult for people to understand that and get that into their minds that you're still performing, you're still going to the gym and working hard, still working hard at your job, still got to earn money, still have all the stresses of life. But we think, well, because it's not uh, maybe uh, as important at the time as what you were doing, um, you know, why should we give ourselves as much recovery and repair? And so um, giving ourselves time in our day to be alone without our phones and our devices or be away from other people is really important. Um, think about ways of recovering and repairing through um, self-massage techniques like um, foam rolling, um, any massage tools that you might have, things like that are really great. Um, doing yoga classes, doing qigong classes, breathing classes that I've spoken about before. All that kind of stuff allows you to have a bit of time in the day for you and to help your body um, to, to you know, kind of regenerate, recover and reboot a little bit. I guess it's finding something that works for you, isn't it? It is that the hours in the day, you know, how can you, as a busy working mum, those hours that you don't have children that you're looking after is probably the time and is the time for me when I'm opening up that laptop and cramming in as much work as I can. And then you're like, oh, it's half past 10 at night. I haven't now done anything for me, me. And I think that's a really hard thing to do, isn't it? Have you got any tips for, yeah, the crazy, busy hecticness uh, of people who just don't physically feel like they've got that time on, in the day? I think it's all easy to say, isn't it? Because I don't have children. It's a little bit easier on that front. But um, I think generally we all just overbook ourselves. It's the same for myself and for a lot of my clients, right? Yeah. But I'll rush between client and client and then I'll try and fit in a coffee meeting with someone that I really don't have time before, but I quite like to do. Mm -hmm. So I stress myself out to get there late inevitably. I have a coffee. Now, when I'm already in a stressed state, is it a good idea to throw caffeine into my system and speed me up even more? Probably not. And then I'm late for my next thing and it just rolls on and we just feel like we've got no time because we do generally try and cram too much in. The art of saying no, it's really, really difficult, but the power of that is, is huge. We have to learn to say no to um, friends, we have to say, learn to say no to family, to stuff that doesn't serve us, that isn't going to help us in whatever our goal might be, um, which might be to create more time or might be to be more productive at work or might be to be more healthy. Yeah, by cramming too much in, we're... Uh, meaning that we can't get all those goals that we want. So by saying no, by giving ourselves some space, um, you know, that's going to hopefully create a bit more time for you. I think we're all a bit scared to say no to stuff. Um, you know, we feel that if we say no now, we might not get invited to that party again. Or if we say, oh, we've got FOMO of missing out from the party that everyone's going to. But realistically, once that party started, sadly, no one really misses us. <laughs> they don't, don't realise we're not there once they all start I having might not fun. Miss you, you know. yeah, right, there we go. <laughs> so, you, you know, we, we maybe put ourselves um, uh, under too much pressure at times. So trying to say no, um, that's the first step in creating some space. And then once you have that space, it's filling it with the right stuff. Okay, so filling it with stuff, some stuff that's going to serve you well. It's going to make you feel good. Or even just taking a bit more time to eat your lunch, eat the right food, right? We've spoken about this before where we're so busy as trainers, right? We're constantly moving between different things. We've got loads of stuff to do. We're program writing till late at night. Often we don't actually give ourselves enough time to eat the right food. And I've been guilty of it. I've had, I'll grab a protein bar here because that's kind of healthy. But when I hit the third or fourth protein bar in a day, it's probably not a good idea instead of a meal. But we find ourselves slipping into that. So crafting that time to eat the right foods will energize us, will make us feel better, will help with that recovery and repair of our muscles anyway, will improve our sleep. And then, you know, that's obviously gonna roll on in that whole self-care subject that we're talking about. I have actually found, for me, I've started meal planning. I've never done it before. I'm kind of one of those, right, quick weekly shop, grab the odd kind of thing, and then each night I'll just look in the fridge and decide what I'm gonna do. 
And actually now, um, having done a few of your meal subscriptions and I thought, oh, the ease and joy of that, of not having to think, you just pick out one of those bags, stopped doing that and I thought, I can do this myself. And actually writing meals down, okay, it takes a little bit just to think your brain on a Sunday evening, but suddenly the stress of that and to think, I know exactly what I'm having tonight because it's written down, grab it, weirdly already kind of... Uh, empties that mind and like frees up a tiny bit of stress of every evening oh what am I going to eat for food so I found that that was actually a very simple little way of just actually planning weekly meals um what else do you suggest for people um just like sleeping getting into better sleeping habits I find particularly when I'm trying to sleep or I wake up a lot in the night that then your brain is just racing like a loony and you can't go back to sleep and then you wake up thinking, oh, I've had a rubbish night's sleep, I just need more sleep and then you're stressing and it's just like this little cycle. cycle the yeah. cycle, yeah. So one massive part of self-care is sleep, which you just mentioned there, right? A lot of us don't get enough of it and we actually undervalue it. Um, you know, a lot of people get embarrassed to say that they nap but if you're not getting enough sleep at nighttime, you've got to take some naps in the daytime, right? You've got to do that. But we wear lack of sleep a bit like a badge of honor. Often we'll go out and we'll say, I only had four or five hours of sleep last night, but I'm surviving on coffee through the day and I've smashed the day. <laughs> and I don't know why we think that sounds great because it really is very detrimental to our health. And again, if we want to look after ourselves in the right way, sleep is one of the most important places to start. Um, so we can help that with a few little tips trying to remove electronic devices. I think we all know that we should do it, but it really does make a big difference. The good thing about most uh, devices now is that they actually have the setting where you can dim the lighting down. So it makes the phone less interactive, with all these colors and things going. You can also put um, things on your phone that locks you out of your social media. So you're not you know, mindlessly scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, that kind of stuff, which stimulates you, right? When we're looking at that, all the colors are stimulating us, the videos are, the stuff that's going on, and it sets our minds racing before nighttime. So trying to digital detox a little bit before bed is quite useful. A good friend of mine taught me this tip. He and his partner, they have a digital box in the house by the front door. When they come in, they put their phones and laptops in there. When they want to use their phone or laptop, they have to sit in the dull corridor on their own and do it. So it means they only do it for a few minutes. And then they come back in and they join their partner. So they're actually conversing, having a nice conversation, which is great for that connection with people anyway. So that starts to already wind them down at the end of the day. They're not thinking about work so much and they're not being so stressed out by being connected. Their phone might be vibrating and they're thinking, what is that? Is that work? Is that someone who needs me? And then before bed, um, you know, spending some time breathing. Breathing techniques are great to kind of help people sleep. And um, if we can slow ourselves down through some breath work, that's going to have a massive effect on not just how long we sleep possibly, but often the depth of sleep that we get. Um, people often don't breathe very well anyway in general life. People tend to breathe quite short, shallow breaths, quite often into the chest area. Uh, and so by just taking long, slow breaths, in through the nose, into the belly, then into the chest, and then out through the nose, just trying to slow that breath down over the period of five or six minutes, can actually just start to wind the body down a little bit and help you get into that sleep. And then the thing is, if you wake up, instead of kind of panicking about, oh my God, I'm awake now, and I'm wide awake and going to check the time, returning back to that breathing pattern and trying to take yourself and slow yourself down again is, is really beneficial. So it, at least if you're not falling asleep fully at that point, you're still kind of in a bit of a meditative state, so it keeps your body relaxed, rather than that panic of, oh no, what time is it? I've got to be up in three or four hours, that kind of scary bit that you get into. We've all been there, and it's trying to kind of combat that a little bit. And the next part of that is actually still on taking the devices away. Don't have the device in the room because you'll be tempted to look at it when you wake up. People often kind of go for that device when they wake up. And again, that's that first thing in the morning. I'm just going to check my phone, reach out of bed, you grab your phone. It's like, no, because you're starting your day with stress potentially, right? You're looking at that, the email pops up, you think, oh, I've got to have this meeting later. I haven't prepared for it. So before you've even had a chance to start your day on a positive note, You've gone, oh, okay, this is what I've got to look for today. Or the news has popped up and told you something awful is happening or whatever. So we just create stress from the beginning of our days, which is not a great way to start to look after ourselves, right? So a great thing to do in the mornings would be get up, either do some breath work, do some you know, gentle stretching just to ease yourself into the day, have your breakfast, and then start to look at the stuff. We've just touched on breathing. And in the past, we've talked about Qigong that you're very heavily into just refresh our memories and for those who haven't watched why is breathing so important clearly we need oxygen <laughs> but your big deep deep breaths and breathing that you do 
it's all about um, how stress affects your breathing and then that effect on your nervous system and some of the chemical imbalances that happen in your body at that point. So when you're in a stressful state, let's think about fight or flight response, you're being chased by a tiger. Your body throws a load of chemicals into your body to help deal with that. So your cortisol levels go up, for example, which is a stress hormone. Great at the time that we need it. Not so great if we have too much of it in our bodies. And because we live our life at this fast pace we're talking about, where we're constantly under lots of stress all day long, non-stop, we're kind of in that stressful state all the time. We have high levels of cortisol for a lot, a lot of people. Cortisol and melatonin, your sleep dog play a little fine balance. If your cortisol levels are high, melatonin is likely to be quite low, and therefore it's going to be affecting your sleep. So if we can use our breath work to bring ourselves into more of a parasympathetic state, that's your rest and recovery state throughout the day, uh, especially if you've gone into a stressful situation, if you can bring yourself back down from that quite quickly, we're going to help reduce the effects of cortisol. The melatonin levels should balance out and therefore we should get a better sleep. So we hope that if we can manage our stress throughout the day by breathing better, breathing through stressful situations, I think everyone says when you're stressed, just breathe, right? Everyone says that all the time, right? So it's not just one breath, it's actually more like five or six breaths. But if you can take five or six deep breaths, slowing down each time, you can then start to have a change on the effect stress is having on you. The lungs are the only organ inside your body you've got direct control over, right? We can't tell our heart when to beat necessarily, we can't tell our stomach when to digest, but we can tell our lungs how much to breathe in and out, how slow, how deep, how fast. And so that can help regulate um, everything else in our body, including those chemicals, including our stressful state. So throughout the day, little bites um, throughout the day of breath work or doing some moving meditations like Qigong, or doing um, an app that helps you with your breath work or your meditations, that kind of stuff regularly throughout the day will have a massive effect on your rest, your recovery, your stress, all the wonderful things we've talked about. So breath is hugely, hugely important. We keep touching upon Qigong and breathing, and you talk about the breathing meditations and movements. Why is that so much sort of easier or you find better because I find it very hard to meditate and to even sit still and to do your breathing and your brain just goes off in all other places why do you like the movement I think a lot of people really struggle with meditations I certainly do and have done for years um, our lives are so fast paced our brains are trained to have so much activity and all the time there's constant stimulation right there's like phones there's tvs there's stuff going on around us all the time people needing us wanting us so to suddenly go, right, I'm going to stop my body, stop my mind and be quiet is really, really tricky because our brains have just been trained over years to become super active. So doing Qigong, moving meditations, you're distracting the mind a little bit because we're thinking about our movement of our body. So you might be moving a limb one way and thinking about sending energy a certain way. So it helps to quieten the mind and allow you to stop thinking about everything else that's going on around you. I think Meditation can sound a bit scary to some people because you think you've got to sit cross-legged on the edge of a mountain in whatever pose, kind of doing your, doing your bits. And, uh, you know, that is really tough for people to kind of get into that thought because they think it's a bit hippie-ish, right? But it doesn't need to be like that. Um, it's kind of something that everyone should be spending time doing, just trying to quiet their mind and do less for just 15 to 20 minutes. You know, we're, we always want to have a positive outcome from things that we do. And a lot of people I've seen who've done um, meditation work, they've gone, well, I didn't really enjoy that session. It wasn't very good because I couldn't quieten my mind. What you've just done there, you've spent 20, 30 minutes breathing. That should be a positive experience. But you've made that negative because you didn't think it was very good. So if I give you breath work to do, well, we can all breathe. So that is a positive experience. If we give you moving meditations where you quieten the mind as well at the same time as doing your breathing, you can't have done that wrong. So it's going to give you a positive experience at the end. So therefore, you're more likely to do it. Then you're getting a better pattern of it. And then you'll get better and better at quieting the mind because it's just like anything else. You've got to train the brain at becoming quieter. Same as you train your muscles to do certain lifts. We haven't touched upon nutrition and, you know, all of this moving and breathing and all the rest of it. I mean, I'm just becoming hungry anyway as we're talking about it. Are there any kind of foods or any way that we can get nutrition to help us in that recovery, I guess, post-workout or just day-to-day -day and finding the benefits from our nutrition? I think in general, we just need to all make sure that we're eating a rounded, healthy diet, right? And I think um, uh, I would always advocate kind of a Mediterranean-style diet where there's lots of colour in it, um, eating the right kind of food, a mixture of fish, a mixture of meats, um, you know, keeping it as varied as possible and eating regularly. 
right? Um, there's a lot of people who I've trained who will come to me and say, right, well, I want these results. I want to lose weight. Therefore, I'm not going to eat. That's a really bad way to go because you're training more. You're working out a lot. You, your body's demanding energy. So we've got to fuel the body so it can recover and repair in the right way. So often by counting the calories too much and trying to um, lose weight in too many extreme ways is actually having a detrimental effect for people's bodies. So eating the right foods, and uh, you know, obviously there's some supplements out there that might be able to support you in your gains. <laughs> it's great hearing about Qigong again, and if it's sort of scaring people and they're like, oh my goodness, how do I even start doing this? You do teach, don't you? You do help yeah. people. Lots of Qigong. Uh, you can find us at Hey You Fit, where we teach loads of classes on Instagram each week, as well as there being courses you can sign up to online. So there's some moving meditations, which is the full Qigong moves. There's some breath work stuff in there. And there's something quite exciting, which is called wild animal play Qigong, where you are doing more physical movements. So it's working on a bit more of the external parts of the body as well. Okay, so what are we going to be talking about next week if people are going to tune in? Okay, so next week we're looking at fitness tracking. Um, so wearables, why you should track fitness um, and what the benefits of that are. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you, Aaron, for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit that bell. And hopefully we will see you again.